Welcome to our lecture online. Here's another example that is very similar to the last one where we are limited in how much we can do. So here we have an example where we have an investment, comp an investment company that invests money in money market funds and in bonds. In the money market funds they yield 2% and the bonds yield 3%. And there's a limit as to how much money the investment company wants to make in those two investments. So in other words, there's a maximum of $600,000 in profit that can be earned. And the question is, how much in each of the funds, either bonds or the market fund, money market fund, can be invested in order to stay within that yield? So again, we need to define the amount of money invested in both the money market fund and in the bonds. So let X be the number of dollars, but in this case, since the numbers are so big, let's make it millions of dollars. So that's the number of dollars invested in funds. And let's make it millions of dollars. So I'm going to put millions of dollars with an M here. So we're talking about millions of dollars. And we're going to do the same for Y. Y equals the number of millions of dollars invested in bonds. So now we need expressions to express the amount of profit or return, as we call return on investment that we're going to earn. So that means 0.02, because that's how much we get from the funds, times the number of millions of dollars invested in funds. So 0.02, that's 2%, um, times x. So this is 2% multiplied times x is equal to the, the return on investment for the funds. And then we can do the same for bonds. So 0.03 times y, which is 3% multiplied times y equals the return from the bonds. And then of course, the total amount of money earned needs to be less than $600,000. So that means that 0.02x plus 0.03y must be less than or equal to 600,000. And notice, um, hmm, but then of course, since I have x and y in terms of millions of dollars, we need to change this. Instead of putting 600,000, we need to put that in terms of millions of dollars, and so that would be 0 0.6. It's six tenths of a million dollars because I have x and y expressed in terms of millions of dollars. So that makes the numbers a lot smaller. Otherwise, you have to deal with those big numbers. Okay, now we're ready to go ahead and solve the problem. But since we have decimals, I want to multiply both sides by 100 to get rid of those decimals. So that means I can multiply the left side by 100 and the right side by 100. So we get 2x plus 3y less than or equal to, multiply this by 100, we get 60. So essentially, when I multiply by 100, I get rid of the decimals. Now, I can put that into a y, y equals mx plus b form, so I can solve that and graph it on the graph. So 3y less than or equal to minus 2x plus 60, and divide everything by 3, we get y less than or equal to minus 2 thirds x plus 20. So this is the inequality that I want to graph, and then to find the boundary, I'm going to replace this by an equal sign, so I go y equals negative 2 thirds x plus 20, and I'm going to graph this line on the graph. So 20 is the intercept on the y-axis, and then the slope is minus 2 thirds, so go down 20 and over 30, that means there's the other point, I can connect those like this, and now I need to figure out which region satisfies that inequality. But of course, I realize I cannot invest less than zero dollars in either investment. So that means X must be greater than or equal to zero. Y must be greater than or equal to zero, which means anything to the left of the Y axis and anything below the X axis is not valid. So I can go ahead and cross that out. This is not valid and this is not valid. But now I need to check for the regions. This is region one, this is region two, and then I need to do a test. And I'm going to pick an easy point, zero, zero. 
So I'm going to test the point zero, zero in region number one. And that's, I'm going to plug in zero and zero for x and y in my inequality to see if that's a valid statement. So zero less than or equal to negative two thirds times zero plus 20 question mark. Is that a valid statement? And of course, simplifying this, I get zero less than or equal to 20 question mark. And the answer is yes, that is indeed the case. Zero is less than 20 like that. That means that I picked a point in a region that's valid. So the region is valid relative to this line on this side. That means it's not valid on the other side. So I can get rid of the other side because that's not valid, which means that this triangle here represents the region on the graph that I can use to invest with. In other words, I can invest, for example, I can go um, five and 10 like this. So this would be the point 10 and five. I can, I can invest 10 million in X, X is uh, funds, and I can invest 5 million in bonds, and the amount of money I would earn would be less than 600,000. And so that would be fine. Let's see if that is indeed the case. So 10 million times X, and uh, X is investment in funds, so that would be 10 million times 0 0.02, 0 0.02, plus uh, 5 million invested in the bonds, which gives me 3%, 0 0.03. So that gives me equal to 10 times that, that would be 0 0.2 plus, that would be 0 0.15, which is equal to 0 0.35. And of course, that's less than or equal to 0 0.6. $600,000 was the limit, and that's the amount of money I would earn with this investment. So you can see that this is indeed a proper region in which I can invest. Nothing more that than, than nothing more than what is limited by the X and Y within this particular region. And that is how it's done. Boy, I wish I had that money to invest like that, huh? Oh well.